All right, hello and welcome back. Now, in the last two videos, we've been looking at how to import uh, the library or module regex to actually perform some very specified uh, interrogation and manipulation of uh, strings, um, and specifically text files or end strings in and of themselves that are stored in Python. In this lecture, we're going to switch to a new module or a series of modules that allow us to interact with Excel. Now, Excel and Python are not naturally compatible. So in order to actually use them, you have to use modules that function as kind of APIs or wrappers, which allow us to pull, uh, uh, reach out to Excel files, uh, identify specific pieces of data that we want from them, and then allow the Python script to communicate and receive that data, and then we can manipulate it within Python in, in itself. In a later lecture, I believe I have it slated for lecture number 29, we're going to talk about something that's way more useful than Excel when you're working with Python, and that's a library called Pandas, which is, if you want to think about it, think of it as kind of the Python version of Excel. And the reason why it's more useful is because once you import that data into Python as Pandas, you can do a lot more with that data because you can harness the power of Python and the power of third-party modules in Python to interrogate and manipulate and really perform some higher-end data analysis of whatever, you're, whatever data you're working with. In this video, however, we're not gonna be working with pandas. We're gonna be working with probably what most people are kind of familiar with coming to this, and that is Excel. And one of the things that we're going to be doing is we're going to have to figure out in this video how to A, import our, our uh, data, which I'm gonna pull up here in just a second. Here you go. Uh, we're gonna figure out how to, uh, I'll pull it back down in just a second. We're gonna figure out how to import XLRD, which is the module that we're going to be working with. This is a Python module that allows us to read the data in Excel. And we're gonna figure out and learn the key functions that you really need to know uh, for XLRD. You might be surprised. XLRD seems like a very um, difficult module to work with because it's so powerful, but in actuality, XLRD is very, very simple to use once you learn really only four or five functions because these four or five functions allow you to basically rip any data you might need from your Python spreadsheet or from your Excel spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm gonna be addressing this in a later part of the video when we actually start trying to manipulate the data that we import from Excel. For right now, just ignore this class that I've created. And, and Adam, you can separate or you can uh, minimize blocks of code like classes or functions with this nice little arrow over here. But up here, I wanna focus on this. I have imported XLRD. Now, hopefully you've already pip installed XLRD and that's worked for you. And if it has, when you import XLRD, everything should just run smoothly. If it doesn't, I really recommend going to XLRD's website and trying to troubleshoot the problem. Um, I can't really do that in this video because the problems that might arise are very user specific. Uh, but the if you have problems importing it for whatever reason, just Google your problem and I promise you, you will find the answer. So let's talk about how you actually start interacting with an Excel spreadsheet. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do, and this is the Pythonic way to do this, is you wanna create an object, which is going to be known as a book. And book is gonna be equal to XLRD, so we're calling our module, and we're gonna use the function open underscore workbook. And what you're going to do is you're simply in quotation marks going to put your file name. So remember, remember, I'm working within a layered nested folder. So I have the directory, the folder name, and then my actual file name that I'm working with. Once you have that done, take some time, get used to it, and type this out, get your book object correct. Once you have that done, you're going to need to specify uh, the sheet that you're going to be working with. And sheet in this case, if you're not familiar with Excel, is this right down here at the bottom, sheet one. And in Python, the first sheet, probably the sheet that your Excel spreadsheet's going to be using is going to be zero, because remember zero in Python is equivalent to the first one. So what you're going to do is you're going to call the book object, and you're going to use the function sheet underscore by underscore index zero. That's gonna set the actual sheet score so that Python and the XLRD library know which file to read. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to want to look at the data in Excel. And the way in which you need to do this so you don't receive an error 
is to set the parameters of your range to uh, the number of rows in that sheet. If you just pick a random number that's greater than the number of rows, you're going to receive an index error because Python won't really know what to pull from the Excel spreadsheet. So this is the way in which you do this. This is how you structure it in, um, in XLRD commands. So you're going to set the range to 0, comma, and I'm going to explain the 0 in a second, 0, comma, sheet dot in rows, which is going to make sure that the number of times it iterates stops at the number of rows that are in the Excel spreadsheet. However, that information alone is not enough. Uh, that's just going to provide a loop for us. What we want to do as we iterate through this Excel spreadsheet is get the num number, uh, or is interrogate each row individually. And the way in which we do that is we create a new object in this for loop. And remember, the object's going to be replaced each time it iterates. And this object is going to be row equals sheet dot row, or row underscore slice. And we're going to set that to i, which is going to be the number of iterations. So iteration 1 will be 0, and then 1, and then 2, etc. And what that's going to do is it's going to take the sheet and the specific row and divide it. So it's going to take just row in the, in the first iteration, row 0. And it's going to slice it. And it's going to take it as its own object so that we can interrogate it individually. Now, let's go to our data. This is just data I ripped off of Excel, uh, Wikipedia. Uh, I, I have no idea if it's actually accurate or not. I haven't looked at it. Uh, certain things look accurate, like Charles 742 and 814. This is a list of the king of the kings of the Franks from about six, uh, the late 600s all the way up to uh, Charlemagne. And what it is is it's a name in this column, a birth date in this column, approximate birth year, and approximate death year in this column. And what I want to do is I simply want to import all of that into my Python script so that I can start working with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to establish the fact that name is equal to row, and this is going to be the row, as we see right here, this object, row number zero. And the reason why we're doing that is because row is functioning as a list in this case. I'm going to print off row so we can kind of see this happening. All right, I'll do that later. Um, I don't want to mess up the entire uh, example that I'm going with. I'll have to close it. Nah, I'll just do it now. So the reason why I had that error is because it, you can't work with uh, XLRD while the Excel spreadsheet's open, uh, especially not if you're working in OneDrive as I am. And so what we're seeing here is Python simply go in, and it's printing off each row. And as you can see here, it's exactly as we saw it in the Excel spreadsheet. I'm not going to open up the Excel spreadsheet ever again throughout the rest of this video uh, because now I can actually start doing everything in just Python. So name is going to be equal to row one. But if we look at this data, we see a simple problem with how we're doing this. Uh, as we slice through everything in our loop, uh, we notice that name, birth, and death are up there. And that's because those are the, uh, the attributes I defined in my Excel spreadsheet. Oftentimes, you'll have Excel data that's like this. It'll have the first row be what each column is supposed to delineate. So the way in which we account for this is we simply start at range 1, which is going to bump us down to the second row in Excel. And now if I run this, you'll see in the output, I have now accounted for that, and no longer do I have that first row in my loop. No, I've gotten rid of it, and I start off with Theodoric. So that's how you get that. The next thing I want to get is I want to get the birth date and the death date. And these are going to be in rows 1 and 2, which correspond to 2 and 3 in the Excel spreadsheet. And I want to get their values. And you notice here what I'm doing. I am converting these to integers. Why am I doing that? The reason is because if I did not, Python would read them as floats. Why would it read them as a float? Well, because it has a point 0 when I'm inputting it. So when I convert when I set up these objects, I am telling Python to convert the data in these rows uh, from floats into integers, because that's how I want to store them. And the other thing I'm curious about is I'm very curious how old the individual was, or the approximate age of the king, uh, when he died. And so I'm going to create another object, and that's going to be age. And age is going to be equal to death minus birth. And now when I go through, I can iterate through all this and extract all that data from Excel, just these three columns, 
can actually start manipulating it and working with it in Python. So one of the ways in which I can do that is I can use this print function. This print, f, uh, we're using f commands, is going to say the name of the individual was approximately this age at the time of his death. Now when I run this script, it comes out like this. <laughs> Let me get rid of this. Run it again so it looks a little cleaner. Now what we get is a series of strings that say Theodoric was approximately 37 at the time of his death, Clovis, etc. That's kind of nifty. It takes the data and puts it in nice polished prose that we can actually look at and read um, a bit more simply. But let's say I wanted to do something a bit more complex. I really want to work with this data and more uh, nuanced ways within Python. So one of the ways in which I can do that is I can go back to our old school thing that we talked about in lecture number 11. I can go to a class. And what I've done here is I've created a class. And the class name is Kings. And Kings is going to have all of these different um, attributes. So we have self, remember you have to have self with our init function, and it's gonna have name, birth, death, and age. And what I wanna do is I wanna have, I wanna iterate through all this data, and I want to uh, run all of these kings through this class so that I have everything stored as dictionaries. There is a Pythonic way to do this, and the way in which you do it is you uh, run uh, the, all this data into a new list called objs, which is my, just my objectives, whatever. You can name this whatever you want. We can name it uh, kings, lowercase, it doesn't matter. And what I'm going to do is in my loop, I'm going to append this new this list that's outside, and it's going to be objs.append, and we're going to do kings, which is going to call this, this class, and we are going to run name, birth, death, and age which are going to correspond to these value, uh, to these objects right here. And so what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to essentially store all of that data as, uh, as a list. And when we print off the list, we will notice something kind of familiar. It's going to present us with a list of, that looks kind of like this, a whole bunch of those class objects that we dealt with before. And if you remember the way in which we uh, kind of handle those objects in the, in, individually, is we use them with we use the vars function, and this will allow us to actually take all that data and read it off not as a series of individual data, but as a series of relational data stored uh, processed through a class and returned as a dictionary. So you can see now in the output. Let's get rid of this. Not run it again. We can see now in the output how we've taken that XLRD module, opened up Excel, analyzed each individual row, sliced it into, individ uh, into individual rows, and then analyzed each value of each individual cell in that row, and then stored those values as objects to then run, those, uh, uh, run all that data collectively through a class, which then allows us to actually see everything and work with everything in Python as a dictionary. Most importantly, you can see how quickly it was able to do it. What is this? Uh, approximately, I don't know, 10 rows of data, it was able to do it in a split second. Um, you can process vast quantities of information this quickly. If I were to go through and just kind of copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste until I had like 2,000 rows, Python would be able to, to do it in probably about 0.9 seconds. My point here is that this shows you how to essentially open up an Excel file in Python, read the data, and extract the data. Now. That's not the only thing we need to do when it comes to Excel and Python. We need to actually manipulate it in some cases, and we need to store that uh, manipulation in another Excel file. And that's what we're going to get to in the next two lectures, lectures 17 and 18. We're going to be using different modules to interact with Excel so that we can take the data and store it and write it to another file. So thanks for listening, and I look forward to talking with you in the next video.